So this is my last night in my apartment. Um, my friend Jamie flew in Friday and we loaded up. Well, I like, you know, stayed up late spackling and painting my studio and stuff. But so she came in Friday and we um, loaded up the truck at my studio uh, and Anissa stuff. Packed up. I'm ready to load up a truck and take it home. Yeah. I don't control that. <laughs> and then we had budgeted like four hours to look for parking because that was what my landlord thought it would take. And we drove to my apartment and I was going to drop off Anissa. And we, no joke, found a parking spot right outside of my place. It was a miracle. I have to get how close we were to the apartment. Point to the apartment, Jamie. <laughs> so then Jamie and I went to an art show and then, well, we got sushi and then we went to an art show. Really good sushi. And then we went and saw Harry Potter and the Cursed Child on Broadway. It was pretty crazy. Like the magical effects were pretty crazy. Uh, Voldemort like ran into the audience and Dementors came down from the ceiling. It was cool. So this morning, Jamie and I got up and ate some eggs. And then I cleaned and packed my room and Jamie generously cleaned out the fridge. And Anissa and her family flew home. And then we had our final goodbye at Coney Island. I felt like it was... It's like the place I went to the most, so besides my studio and the residency. So it felt like a good place to say goodbye to the city. So we, um, we saw the freak show and we went to the museum and we got food with my friend Erica from college. And then we hung out on the beach and we walked the boardwalk and then we did the wonder wheel at sunset. And yeah, so, and we came back and I logged out of all of my things on the Roku TV. So we're going to get up early. We're going to throw the rest of the stuff in the truck and just kind of sweep and clean. And then we're going to meet my friend in Philly and see the Duchamp work. And then we may go see Mr. Rogers uh, Museum in Pittsburgh. And then I'll be back home in like 48 hours, which is surreal. And I'm no joke. I'm going to like, so I get back Monday. I'm going to unpack the truck and take the truck back. And then I'm going to sleep for a whole day with my cats in the air conditioning. And then I'll get to work on the next stuff that's due <laughs> the next day. Literally, I am so tired. I am like the tiredest human ever. And I'm just like sore everywhere. Moving is crazy. And then the next morning we, you know, loaded up the car cleaned out my apartment and uh, we hit the road about 9 or 9 30. Okay, here we go. <laughs> here we go. <laughs> and we met my friend Chris in Philadelphia and we um, ate amazing Indonesian food. It was Jamie's first time and traded stuff that Chris and I had for each other. And then Jamie and I went to the art museum to see the Duchamp glass piece that I'd always wanted to see in person and it was so cool. Um, and then we walk, walked up the rocky steps. We did not run. Um, and we didn't even know that that was part of the art museum, but it was fun. Take a video of Jamie and I slowly walking up <laughs> the rocky stairs. Okay, so after the Philadelphia Museum, Jamie and I drove to Pittsburgh. And we stayed at a hotel there that had a uh, breakfast. And in the morning, well, this was kind of like a last minute, like, I love, I'm interested, I've researched Duchamp's work, and I'm a huge fan of Mr. Rogers. And I couldn't decide if on our route home if we should go through Philly or Pittsburgh. And then when my friend Chris said he could meet us there, I decided to go to Philadelphia. But then Jamie was like, it's only like 45 minutes more to do both. 
So we stayed at this hotel in Pittsburgh and then we went to the Mr. Rogers Museum in the morning and it was amazing, amazing. We got to see his sets. They had a whole fashion section of Mr. Rogers, some of his real sweaters. And I found out that when he would run errands, he would wear jumpsuits. So I'm gonna make a jumpsuit to run errands and inspired by Mr. Rogers. And then Jamie ended up having to drive the day, even though I was planning on driving because I got this weird dizzy migraine that I get sometimes and it was not safe to drive. Yeah, then we got back and I got to see my husband and my cats. And the cats did remember me, that was a fear of mine. And then today, the next day, has just been like, a, I mandated myself a rest day because I have not stopped moving for two weeks. I'm in my PJs watching movies and hanging out with my husband and cats and then now I get to jump back into the deadlines of my daily life. Catwoman! Hi! Hi! Do you remember me? You do? Hi! Mister, come here. Come here, buddy. Hi. Oh, hi. Hi. You remember me? Hi. Um, I wanted to record this really fast. Um, I've been back for like a week. <laughs> and, you know, I'm trying to process everything I mean, it's a, it was a lot. Three months is a lot to process. But um, I can say that, like, I've been observing that I feel, like, mentally stronger. Like, I've always been an anxious mess of a person. Just, like, I just, yeah, I just feel, like, anxiety all over my body all the time. And I feel like that's not as present. And it's been kind of a surprise for me. And I almost wonder if, like, you know, I was challenged mentally, physically, emotionally, all summer, you know, like, I had to push myself physically in a way that I was not really prepared to, like, just carrying impossibly heavy loads, like a donkey or something, um, up hills, upstairs, no AC, I mean, just like sweat all over you, like, you're chugging water, and it doesn't make a difference, it's just sweating out of you, um, and even, I would argue, I also had to you know, process a lot of, you know, I was missing my family, my husband, my cats. And when I make art, these are often support systems that I lean on and I had to do it all by myself. Um, so I guess what I'm trying to say is I think I pushed myself past my limits in a variety of capacities and I expanded my endurance mentally, physically, emotionally. Like I feel like stronger in all those capacities. Um, and I think that's a major outcome that I feel capable of more, um, in a way that's really exciting. And I also feel like my mind is on, I, I mean, I think that, that may have been one of the biggest gifts anybody could give me is like, I slept almost the whole summer. I mean, there was a few all nighters in there, but that's my life. But yeah, I, I feel like I took care of my, I mean, like I was like exercising, I was sleeping, I was, um, filling myself conceptually as an artist, like constant conversations around art. And I feel like my mind is on and processing in ways that I don't know if I ever have processed in this capacity. So like, I feel more, I don't know. I just feel more in control of my own mind and emotions in a way that I haven't in a long time ever, <laughs> ever. Uh, and so I just wanted to take a second to reflect on that, that, I'm really noticing that there's, I have more mental um, resilience in my daily life. And I feel like I'm the, in the driver's seat and I'm not like a victim to my emotions. Like I'm not feeling powerless by my anxiety. I'm feeling like I am the one in control. And that's a big surprise for me. 
so far. Who knows how long it'll, I mean, I hope, I hope it'll stick, but I don't know. Okay, just one more observation. <laughs> I, I've always worn many hats. I've always, you know, the teacher hat, the gallery hat, the, um, the friend and family hat, the, um, you know, Lindsay's art hat, helping with Clint's art hat. There's just always many, many, many things that I'm juggling at once. And I think, I don't want to say resentment, but maybe there was, maybe there was some resentment brewing there. Just that I had always wanted to know what kind of person would I be if I could just focus on my art. Uh, it was like a fantasy or a dream that I had like built up in my mind. Like if I just had, if I had all the time in the world to focus on my art, I would get a million things done and I would have everything figured out. And you know, I think we all tell ourselves these weird little fantasies. And you know, there was some other things I had to juggle this summer. You know, like we had a peak had a big show at the CAC and we were kind of, I was helping to manage that and things like that. But all in all, I, I spent the majority of my time focusing on my work. And then of course the people that came to visit me and then, but it was maybe the closest glimpse of that fantasy that I'm ever gonna get. And the answer is, so what kind of person is Lindsay if she gets to focus on her work? And the answer is, she's the exact same person. <laughs> like I was still down to the wire. There was still not enough time. And my coworker or my, well, I, I team teach with somebody who's amazing. And we always say this, we're always like, if we give you a day to work on a project or five months to work on a project, you're still going to be down to the wire. Like it doesn't matter. Um, <laughs> it's so true, but yeah, I was still like my wild and crazy self pulling all nighters, carrying ladders across town, trying to do weird, impossible things. Um, so I'm trying to figure out how to put this into words. I think the resentment has evaporated from my perspective because no matter what my circumstances are, I'm still going to be like super Lindsay. I'm still going to be like over the top and ridiculous and pulling crazy hours and trying to be there for as many people as I can and trying to make my, my weird ideas happen. Like it, it was nice to have this glimpse of this fantasy that I had put in my mind. Like, I'm never gonna have it all figured out. And I'm always gonna be like, there's never gonna be enough time. And so I think, I think I'd like to try to enjoy it and not have, instead of spending and wa wasting time. Sorry, I was thinking. Instead of like wasting time, wishing I had different circumstances, I just wanna enjoy the circumstances that I have and just, enjoy the people I get to spend time with, enjoy the art ideas that I get to make exist. Yeah. So these are, both of these are raw trains of thoughts that I'm still trying to work through, but those are the conclusions I've come up with thus far. So now it's like more than a year later <laughs> and uh, I'm still in my PJs, uh, watching all this footage. Uh, and it's been interesting cause now I've watched all of it, all the footage and cause it was such a whirlwind to do all of that, to move up to New York city and have all those amazing experiences and then drive back. And as soon as I got home, I had a million deadlines to deal with. Like I immediately had to make these Merce Cunningham blobby costumes that I was doing for a collaboration with Pwns Inc. And then I was making my friend's wedding dress and planning her bachelorette party. And so I like got home and it was like, bam, right back into my other life. <laughs> um, so it's, I did not get time as soon as I got home to process things. So I really didn't start processing this experience until a year later as I started watching and editing and posting these photos to my YouTube channel. I honestly did it just for me. I just wanted to have record of this transformative experience and watching it back. I, I cannot say how grateful I am. Like 
just watching it puts me back in that really clear mental state and I feel inspired and I like I feel like I tapped into a higher version of myself in that experience and I feel like when I go back and watch this um it reconnects me to that it like hardwires my brain back into that headspace or something so if anybody watching this is going through something transformative like that could be like your senior year in college or a travel a big travel experience or a hard project I highly recommend doing these weird video diaries um even if you don't I mean I posted them to my YouTube channel because I just wanted to be transparent about what a residency looks like because I think it's always recommended to artists but um it's very abstract like what is a residency uh, and they they all look different there are there's so many different kinds I'm doing a different one right now that's local in my city so they not all residencies are like that but that's why I posted it to my YouTube channel um so yeah you don't even have to do it for your YouTube channel you could do it just for yourself but I highly recommend it. It's been a really cool experience watching it. One more thing I wanted to add that my last year self did not say when I was doing those concluding thoughts is something that really stuck with me was that there was this theme of like kindness. Um, like so many people like at the residency and at my studio and like they seemed like caught off guard or surprised um, by like my approachability and that like, like they knew I was like committed to my work, but I guess they were like intrigued by that. I just tried to be like kind to them. Um, and then I ended up making friends with like so many of the convenience store workers and like, um, uh, people that lived on the same street as my studio. And I guess to me, it was refreshing that my character became a dominating conversation point and factor um, because I do want to be a great artist, but I also just want to be a good person. And I'm glad that that seemed to be something that came up a lot. It came up a lot in the curator meetings. It came up a lot. Um, yeah. With anybody that I met. So I thought that was kind of cool. Uh, and I thought about it a lot. You know, how can I sort of boost that? How can I keep trying to be, someone kind and approachable, um, and then I hope I never lose that. So anyways, uh, this is 2023, Lindsay. Thanks for going on that summer 2022 journey with me if you made it all the way to the end of this video. <laughs> Good luck on your own adventures. Also, there's still a few more things I'm gonna do with this residency. I may put together like a little book because uh, there's some pretty funny images. Uh, fun and awesome and inspiring images. And uh, I think I'm going to put together a video just of the performances I did in New York. And I think I'm also going to put together a worksheet on how to do your own residency at home, um, how to do some of the things I did when I was in New York. So keep an eye out for all those things.